The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. That jot and tittle are the smallest of punctuation, so to speak. In other words, it's, it's the smallest of detail. There's not even the smallest of detail that will not be fulfilled. Now, how is that even possible? As I was looking at that, and this is, this is a message, I, I'll just be transparent about it, I, a message I preached when I was pastoring and several years back. And uh, um, when the pastor asked me if I would preach this morning, I, uh, I just wanted to seek the Lord and say what direction He would take me in. And He brought me back to this message. And uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you this morning. I believe it will. Uh, but I've mentioned a little something about it uh, in the Bible Institute and, and in a devotion that I did this week. Uh, I mentioned a, a message that was preached many years ago by a fairly well-known preacher here in America. And I'm going to use some of what he had to say at the very end of this. Uh, but think about what this says. That there's a necessity that the law be fulfilled. Whatever God said, God's going to do. Amen. And what He wants accomplished is going to be accomplished. Jesus came to fulfill the law. The Bible says that all the law will be fulfilled. Everything that God has said in His Word would happen, either has happened or will happen. As we're uh, looking at these verses in the book of Revelation in Sunday school. I mean, just to read and, and to understand, even to, just to grasp a little bit of what it's talking about, that's going to be fulfilled. And there's nothing pleasant about the wrath of God. But it's coming. And people need to realize that. Uh, the law must be fulfilled in order for there to be a way to gain access to God. All right. The law is true. The prophecies will come to pass. There has been a fulfiller of the law. I'm not really sure if that's a word or not, but it fits. Jesus is a fulfiller of the law. Every jot, every tittle. There was absolutely nothing that Jesus did that was contrary to the Word of God, the ways of God, the law of God. Now, I want us to look at that word fulfill. It's an important to understand the word. It means to satisfy requirements. It means to finish or complete. To bring to an end. To develop the complete potential. Abundantly supplied or provided... It means to cram. To just, you know, I, we used to talk about the, the students cramming for a test or something. They're trying to get as much information in their head in a short period of time so hopefully they'll be able to do well on the test. But to fulfill means to cram as much as is possible into a space. The idea to fulfill is to level up to the brim. When Jesus told those that were there at the marriage, He said, fill the pots up to the brim. Fill them. They were full. They were fulfilled. They were completely full. To accomplish an executed task completely means to fulfill. To supply what is needed to perfection. Jesus came to fulfill the law. 
And he did it perfectly. Perfectly. The word fulfilled is used over and over again concerning Jesus Christ. It says he fulfilled what the prophets of old said. He, it says he fulfilled what the scriptures said. He fulfilled his father's will. He fulfilled the law. We could give reference after reference to this fact in the four Gospels. Jesus was a fulfiller in his ministry. Right? It was his purpose in coming to fulfill what needed to be done. What he did, we can't do. We couldn't fulfill the law. The Bible pointed that out to us, that we, uh, when, when God gave the law, we look at the law and we say, well, that is wonderful. Only problem is I can't do that. Right. I, maybe I can do a little something here or there, but to fulfill the law means to complete it perfectly. And no man has been able to do that but Jesus. Amen. He was the fulfiller. It was his purpose in coming to fulfill what needed to be done, and he's the one that did it. I want you to think of it this way. In doing what Christ did in this world, who He is, His life and ministry was filled full of truth, perfection, purpose, and outcome. Everything about Him is filled full. No half measures with Jesus. No, any old ways okay with Jesus. No laziness about what he did. He did everything that he did perfectly. He, everything about him is filled full. There's no room for imperfection. There's no room for sin. There's no room for compromise. And there was absolutely no room for failure. There are those who have the opinion... And it's just an opinion. I, I read this recently. I thought it was pretty good. Did you know that God actually did leave something out of the Bible? Your opinion. I like that. Uh, because I have one. And, and everybody has one. But he, he left that out. Uh, there are those who had the opinion that, yes, Jesus did not sin, but Jesus could have sinned. That's what they believe. Now, what that means is they do not believe in the impeccability of Jesus Christ. And they also do not believe that he was filled full. Because there's no room in him for the potential to sin. Yes, he was a man, absolutely, but he was God. And that merged together perfectly in him. And he was filled full. He and he alone could be the sufficient sacrifice for sin because he was filled full. He and he alone could pay the price of redemption. You can't work for it. You can't do all of those things. He and he alone could be the Savior. If you're looking for anything else, then you're looking in a place that cannot help you. Because only Jesus can be the Savior. Why? Because he was filled full of all it took to be the one and to do what was needed to be done. Nobody else could do what Jesus did for us. And he's always been faithful. It's like with some this morning. He's always been faithful. He fulfilled because he was filled full. And just think about that. There was no vacancy in him. No room for any contamination, no defilement, no sin. He was filled full with everything that is good and right. I'm going to read some verses to you. If you want to just jot these down, it'll be fine. Uh, in John chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 14, the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. This is this full of grace and truth. Full. Now, last time I checked, if you're full of grace and truth, really no room for anything else. 
and that's Jesus. He is full of grace and truth. And the Bible says, and of his fullness have all we received. When you get Jesus, you get the fullness of Jesus. When you get him, you get what he can do. And you get what he's done. When you get him, you get the fullness have we all received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. To be full of grace and truth is to be full of grace and truth. And Jesus is full of grace and truth. And so when he went to Calvary, it was a perfect sacrifice because he was full of all that was necessary. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. To be full of the Holy Ghost is to have no room for anything that would be a blemish or a spot or anything that would be wrong. He was full of everything that he needed to be full of which is exactly what we needed. There are those who, uh, where well the Bible even talks about another gospel, another Jesus. They're, they're offering things, making claims that, that, that can, they can never keep. Because none but Jesus are full. Full. What do you need? He has it all. He is full. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, This then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Well, why is there no darkness? Well, because He's full of light. There's no room for darkness. I, I was thinking, but we're, again, we're talking about Revelation. Sunday, I was thinking about where the Bible says that Jesus is going to be the light of that city. Best I can figure out, there are no shadows there. I mean, if he's full, and he's the light, everywhere you go, there's light. You can't get away from it. No shadow. Understand what that, what that should be explaining to us this morning, is we have all we need in him. He's full. He's, and and, and don't, don't misunderstand the word sufficient. When we talk about the Bible says that you know, my grace is sufficient, you hear people use that word like it's, well, it's almost good enough to really you know, do the job. No, the word sufficient means it takes care of it all. And, he, and Jesus does that. Why? Because he's full. He's filled full. And he fulfills everything that needs to be done. And he is full of light. There is no darkness in him at all. John 17, 4 says this, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. How could he do that? He completed the work because he was full. He had everything, and he did it to the fullest degree. I'll just throw this out for those that might hear this, just in case you don't believe a certain way. If you think that you can be saved and then lose that, you don't believe Jesus was full. Because the Bible tells us about Jesus that what he did, he did once, because once was enough. When he went to the cross and paid the sin debt, that's all that needed to be done because he fully paid for it. And if you get what he gave, you get the fullness thereof. It's full. He said, I finished the work. I completely did it. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. He took everything the world and the devil could throw at him and he completed his course without sin. Why? Because he was full of everything necessary to do that. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19 says this, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. In him. He took upon him the form of a servant. Philippians tells us that. 
made himself no reputation. Philippians tells us that. But at no point was Jesus less than God. He was full. He had the filling of the fullness of God. He was filled with righteousness. He was filled with holiness, and I should say, and still is. And he's always, he always has. Uh, what, the, what the disciples saw, when the disciples saw Jesus, they saw the body that housed the fullness of God. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 says this, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus told the disciples, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. If you've seen me, you've seen God, because I am God. Yep. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, because he is God. And, and that's one of the things we're studying right now uh, in the Bible Institute, the fact that Jesus Christ is God. Yep. And you can't somehow or another separate that or split that. Why? Because He is full of the fullness of the Godhead. He is God. And He came into this world. I mean, how much clearer could it be? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ is impeccable. Yep. What does that mean? Yes, He did not sin. He could not sin. For he is God in flesh. He is without sin and without the capability. He is the all-sufficient Savior. You don't need to look for another. Another name. There's no other one. There's no other way. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19, the Bible says this, For what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all. Yep. Now, it's bad right now. Y'all go ahead and admit to it. You know, I mean, there, there are things going on right now, and somebody's already reminded me this morning that I'm getting old. Uh, that, I, that was really funny. They said, I just love old people. I, I, you know, and I laughed at it. I, I, you know, I love old people too. I mean, I am one. So, but anyway, but I, I was thinking about how really bad things are right now. Do you realize that as bad as they are, God's still above all that? Yeah. And, and don't get the idea that God can't handle it. I mean, again, I, I got to you know go back to Sunday school. God's going to handle it. He's going to take care of it. And he does not win. Why? Because God is full of what God is. He's above all of this. And he said, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he says, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is body, listen, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Listen, if you're saved this morning, don't ever consider yourself some second class citizen. Did you realize that the fullness of the fullness of God has been given to you? You have that. I mean, we're not praying to get the Spirit of God get saved. We get the Spirit of God and we get saved. And the fullness, it says, and the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. He's giving up. Christ is all I need. Christ is all you need. He's given us everything we need. And every jot and every little tittle, every little detail, in every way, He is the Savior. He's all we need. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. How is it possible that Jesus Christ could pay for the sins of the whole world? He's filled full. He's the only one. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I, I was told that in, uh, um, 
in, in grammar that that's redundant. Exceeding abundantly above. In other words, probably, you know, Microsoft would so throw some little line up under that and say, well, you don't need to say all that. Be more precise. That's pretty precise, I think. It's telling us that Jesus is above everybody. And that what and who he is and what he can do and the fact that he is so filled, he can do exceeding abundantly above. He's not just a little bit greater. He's just not a little bit above. He's exceeding abundantly above. No matter what it is that you're facing or I'm facing or what kind of difficulties we have, he is exceeding abundantly above all of that. And he can meet the needs that we have. Matthew 28, 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I was preaching Wednesday night. I, I told him, I said, uh, uh, from the book of Exodus, I said that the Bible says that Joshua and the army discomfited the army of Amalek. And I said, now, I'm going to give you what I call a country definition of that. They whooped them. They whooped them. And the only way that the enemies of God can be whooped is by God. Because He has all power. He is filled full of every attribute He has. He doesn't get it in measure. He's not a little holy. He's completely holy. He's not a little right. He's completely righteous. He doesn't have some power. It says all power is His. Anything that's, that's out there that anybody has has to be by God delegating or allowing. That's it. Because He is sovereign. God. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 tells me this, Wherefore He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing ever, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Did you know that you can't be too bad? That God can't save you? He can save to the uttermost. Why? Because he's filled full. He's the all-sufficient Savior. And I, I, don't, I don't know what you're waiting for. I guess I could ask myself that same question when I was lost. Well, what are you waiting for? When I was lost, Nobody had to convince me of that. Nobody ever had to convince me I was a sinner. I, knew. I mean, I lived with me. I knew the way I thought. I knew the things I did. I, I, I knew I was a sinner. You didn't convince me that I was a sinner. My problem was I didn't think I could be saved. I didn't realize that Jesus Christ is filled full. And everything that I needed, He had. And only He could change me. Only He could make the difference. He's able to save them to the uttermost that will come to God. He made it very clear in John 14, 6. I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, because he is filled full. And every and what he paid, it was finished. He completed the task. Jesus Christ fulfilled every requirement, and he could do it because he was filled full with holiness. He is God in flesh. Through him, you can be saved. This is what I can't do. I can't look at you in the face and say, well, I believe you're saved or you're not. Can't do that. You can look at people's life and you can do what I've heard described as fruit examination, and I believe you can do that. I believe you can do that. But quite frankly, I'm not the judge in that. I'm not. God's the judge in that. But I do know this, that if you're lost, Jesus is enough. He's filled full. And so, therefore, he can fulfill everything you need. He's filled full. Through him, you can be saved. He meets every need you have, and through him, we are kept by the fulfilling power of who he is.
I mentioned this the other day, and I, I'm just going to read this to you. Somebody told me about this uh, and said, you ought, you ought to pull this up and, and listen to it. And, uh, uh, and I know Aaron probably thinks this is an impossibility, but I actually saved it, and I still have it and everything, you know, and it works well, you know. Uh, he's still trying to teach me how to operate these computer things and stuff. And that's why he loves old people. <laughs> you know. Uh, even before there were computers, there was a saying that you can't teach an dog, old dog new tricks or something. So that, that's kind of me. But, but I believe I could, and I, and I have in times past, I, 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 would, I pull it up every day. And just, it doesn't take me just a few minutes to listen to it. And it just keeps reminding me how full God is. The preacher's name was uh, Dr. S.M. Lockridge. Uh, his, his actual name is Shadrach Meshach Lockridge. S.M. Lockridge. And he actually tells the story in the, in the message that he preaches. He said, uh, people have asked him, why didn't his parents also call him Abednego? He said, well, they thought it sounded too much like a bad Negro. <laughs> He's a black preacher. So they only stopped at the S&M. S.M. Lockridge. But as he preached this, and the message was, uh, if I remember right, about an hour and ten minutes long. But this is just an excerpt from it. I want you to get this. The Bible says, My king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder if you know him. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define His limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know it? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's Son. He's the sinner's Savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea of literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient Savior. I wonder if you know Him today. He supplies strength to the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. But I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He said, I wished I could describe him to you. Indescribable. He's, incompre he's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him off of your mind. 
You can't get him off of your hand. You can't, you can't outlive him. You can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. That's my king. He's filled full with all of what is God. In every attribute, in every jot and tittle, in every of the smallest of details, he is the fulfiller because he is filled full of all the things that are right and holy. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There is no need for you to look in any other direction, for there is no other that can do what he can do for you. Amen. Nobody. Now, won't you trust him? Won't you, won't you call upon him? He has what you need. He has forgiveness. He has mercy. He has grace. He loves you, even though you and I are unlovable. That's who He is. Won't you dedicate yourself to Him today? If you know Him as your Savior, would you live for Him as your Lord? Would you place it all before Him and say, I have nothing and am nothing, but here I am? Would you fill me that I might be what you would want me to be? Christ is all you need. There's another lot, not another one like him. I found that I did it. I think everyone's done it. They're looking for things. They're looking. Well, maybe this will do it. Maybe this will fulfill me. I thought drums would do it, and it didn't. And whatever it might be with you, I don't know what it is. But maybe you're looking and looking. Maybe you're looking in the wrong place. Because the only one that can fill you up, the only one that can fulfill you is Christ because He was filled full. And what He offers us is Him. It's interesting. That the Bible says that our great reward is Him. If you have Him, you have everything you need. Everything. So, where are you this morning? What category do you fall under? Are you a, what's those modern terms they're trying to use? Are you a seeker? Are you, are you looking at, uh, seeking things, trying to... F well, maybe you are. I'm telling you, when you find Jesus, you don't have to look anymore. Because yeah. He will fill you full. Yeah. And if you're here this morning and you don't know Him as your Savior, what a great day. Because He'll change your life. Amen. He'll change your status. He'll change your position. He'll change your eternity. If you'll trust Him today. In just a minute, we're going to have an invitation. You need to come if you don't know it. Well, I do know it. Yeah. If He is all we need, why are we trying to diversify so much? Some say you need to be well-rounded. I look at that as eating good. <laughs> because I really don't need to be well-rounded in the world. Right. Amen. <clears throat> I have found that I have so much useless information in my head from when I was lost. When I take those little quizzes about songs from the 60s or the 70s or something, they say, you must be 
a genius. Well, I just know all about that stuff. I wish I didn't. I really do. Because it's just taking up space. But I have found that it's losing its value to me. The more I get closer to Jesus. If you know Him today, I believe you can get closer. I believe you can draw nigh. I believe you can set some things aside and put Jesus in their place. And you'll see a fulfilling taking place in your life. This was a statement that was made to me. <clears throat> I'll tell you two of them. When I first got saved, <clears throat> one of my buddies, my friends, told me, he said, I understand, and that's the way he put it, he said, I understand you got religion. Which, that's not what happened. But I, that was his terminology. I said, I understand you got religion. Now, you're welcome to come to my house anytime you want to. But you can't bring Jesus. Well, I told him, we come as a pair now. <laughs> and I was never welcome in this house. And somebody else told me that what I did by being saved was I threw my life away. I gave up the potential that I had to make something out of myself. To be a rock star, if you want to view it that way. And I thought about that. And the best I can figure out is the only thing that I gave up to be saved was hell. I gained everything because he's full. He's full. That's our king. That's our king. Let's all stand, please, if we would. They're going to have a verse of an invitation. And this morning, if you need to come, if you need to be saved, by the way, let somebody know that. And what they'll do, they can take this Bible and tell you about a filled full Jesus that has everything you need. I mean, He can forgive you of everything because He paid the price. Or maybe this morning you just need to come <clears throat> because maybe you got a lot of open spaces in your life that he needs to fill up. He wants to fill you full with him. Whatever it might be. Or it might be that you, you're facing something right now that's just too big for you. I'm telling you, it's not too big for him because he's filled full. He has all you need. He can get you through it. He can bring the victory. He is the victory. If you need to come, I want you to come. Lord, help us this morning to see that you are all we need. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the all-sufficient Savior. You sit on the circle of the world. And in you all things consist. You're all we need. Help us, Lord, to see that this morning and to come to you. Speak to hearts as only you can. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.